Ladies and gentlemen, decimal, fractional, and negative radicals exist. And no, I didn't invent them. Let me explain here how these look like. By decimal radicals, we mean this. That the index number is a decimal number. Fractional ones look similarly. The index number is a fractional. And negative radicals don't mean that the radicand here is a negative number or the root is a negative number we mean that the index number is a negative number okay these exist and I'll show you the, uh, a couple of things about these they are pre-programmed in any common scientific calculator and they didn't just get there by accident they've been purposefully built this way okay so, first things first, what do we have here on paper? Some kind of colorful lines. Come on in a little bit closer. And on the horizontal axis, you can see numbers 0, 1, 2, 4, 8, 9, 16, whatever. And here you can see other numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What we've got here, look at the black line. Stay with the black line, okay? What you see, you'll even do I. Uh, connected it with straight line segments. This is the graph. It's a curve, okay? Uh, this is the graph of the square root. Usually, uh, the square root doesn't have the number 2 as an index number, but since we're discussing decimal uh, radicals, just, just go with it, okay? That's why I placed it there for a purpose, okay? So this is the graph of the second root of numbers. And I plotted it very simply. 1 by 1 is 1, 2 by 2 is 4, 3 by 3 is 9, 4 by 4 is 16, 5 by 5 is 25. You get the idea. It's very easy to make it. You can do the same at home. So that's the square root of things. The cube root of things is this red line. Stay with the red line, okay? Oh, at the little bit of detail here that's very hard to see. I will discuss that one. Uh, I have a better picture of it. It's not a straight line, or even though, like I said, I simplified it with line, straight line segments. Everything is curving. So this line is for cube root of things 1 by 1 by 1 is 1 2 by 2 by 2 is 8 3 by 3 by 3 is 27 you get the idea this blue line is the fourth root of things and the pencil line represents the fifth root of numbers okay so you have square roots cube roots fourth and fifth roots of things it is logical to visualize, say, two and a half root, uh, two and a half root of things to be somewhere generally here, somewhere, somewhere there, just, just roughly. Okay, you kind of get the idea. If the square root of, if the square root of sixteen is four. And the cube root of 16 is estimated to be, let me see that point there, is estimated to be, let's just go out horizontal, round around there, and that's 2.2-ish. The cube root of 16 is 2.2, and the fourth root of 16 is exactly 2, and the fifth root of 16 is 1 there can be a two and a half root of 16 living somewhere there or found somewhere there and you can see this one on a calculator this is how you can make this work you have this button there and for the x amount for the index number in front of the root you can enter any number you like for example 2.5 second function 16 before I press equal I estimate that the two and a half 
root of 16 is going to be somewhere there. And if I make a horizontal line, it's kind of close to 3.1, 3.2, something like that. Let's press equal. Kind of close to 3.1, 3.03. Okay. So the t two and a half, two and a half root of 16 exists. If that exists, so does the 2.6, the 2.7, and uh, and the 3.89. Sorry, the 3.8 root of 16 also exists. The 3.8 root could be found somewhere there between the third and the fourth root. So 3.8 cube root or what uh, root sign and 16 and we've got that number 2.07 which is pretty close to what we see on the graph there if I come at horizontally with that point you can see it's more than 2 and less than 2.2 there 2.2.07 so the 3.8 root of 16 exists it's somewhere there okay so you can envision that between these black lines and red lines and blue lines there is an infinite number of more roots decimal roots all of them take place here and you can continue the pattern if there is fourth fifth and sixth root of things there is a millionth root of 16 as well Let's try the 10,000th root of 16. See what the calculator says. It exists, I'm telling you. 10,000. Second function, nut button, 16. There. 1.00 something something. Okay, it's more than one. Actually, in fact, all of these, all of these lines, all of these curves, all, you know, this is half a parallelogram. Oh, Sorry, half a parabola. So all of these parabolic lines are uh, taking place here, and uh, and are all of them more than one. So there is that fancy line that I just drew. That's one. So all of them take place above this line. None of them will reach one. They will come close to one and close to be a flat line you can see they are getting flatter and flatter but they will not reach this horizontal line there's nothing below here and if it's true for decimals the same is true for fractions uh, if this is the second power or sorry second root of things there must be a first root somewhere somewhere in the field in this direction if there is a 2.1, 2.2, 2.3rd and 2.5th there has to be a 1.9th root a 1.5th root and 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 the first root of things and in fact the first root is just a straight line and it goes here so the small fraction or a small decimal, say 0 0.75th root, is somewhere, it's still a curve, it's somewhere there, just eyeballing it, somewhere there. The 0 0.25th root or a, or a quarter root is very nearly a straight line, but it's going somewhere there, you get the idea. And all of these curves exist between this straight line, which is uh, just y equals x, 1 at 1, 2 at 2, 3 at 3, 4 at 4, it's just a straight line. And, and this horizontal line that's, uh, that's drawn at 1, because everything is, no matter what number you pick for the index number in a radical, everything will be more than 1.
or so um, so that's why everything is above this line where y equals just one now last one negative radicals all right so this is all the positives whether it's decimal or exponent form they all live in this area here where are the negative radicals the negative radicals uh, have a hard stop at a vertical one here and they are found here and they run in this general direction this way and this way closer closer to this line or further away from this line but never reaching zero and and always staying between zero and one as well there yeah what is the minus second root of 16 0 0.25 so at 16 0 0.25 is there you're gonna get a point for it it exists and like I said these negative roots didn't just get into the calculator circuit by mistake or accident I have a better picture of some of these roots uh, the, the blue the red the black is the same as on on uh, this page the, meaning the second third and fourth uh, radicals and and it's the same same thing here so it, it's not a straight line they, they all have some curvature between 1 1 and 0 and the negative roots run this way I made the lines for the minus second radical the minus first and the minus half okay so that's how these things look like they exist